on the 25th of April, the MPP will be embarking on its parliamentary and uh, presidential uh, uh, primaries. And uh, we, we are told that last week it's ended, you know, the for people to pick nomination forms and file it, it ended that process. And it was marked, uh, marked by a lot of challenges. People, uh, some national executives we are told, preventing uh, aspirants, prospective aspirants from picking uh, nomination forms. We've been joined in the studio by the director of elections and research for the NPP to help us, you know, understand some of these issues that the party, you know, had to resolve or is still resolving and also what to look forward to on the 25th of April when the party will be embarking on its presidential and parliamentary primaries. Hello, good morning, sir. Good morning. So, Evans Nemaku, so tell me about the process. You know, uh, when it comes to uh, picking of nomination forms, we had also, you know, a, a directive, you know, from the party to say that nobody should be prevented from picking nomination forms. But we had cases of people who couldn't pick at the constituency level, they couldn't pick at the regional level, they went to the national level, some of them were prevented. How come? Well, thank you very much. Uh, what I would say to start with is that at the close of our nomination, presidential parliamentary, it was marked with a lot of success. Mm -hmm. uh, we did this in 168 constituencies. Mm -hmm. And so at the close of the nomination for one month, all those who had interest in procuring form got them. And all those who were bold enough to file their nomination, did so mm -hmm. at the constituency level, regional level, and national level. Let's look at the issue of Francis Adai, who couldn't pick, I mean, he was denied the opportunity to pick at the constituency level, the regional level, he had to go to, you know, the national level to get to get his forms. Well, I think you are talking of Honorable Adai Nimo of yeah. Mampong constituency. Yes, constituency. Yes, I mean, there was the initial challenge of shortage of forms mm -hmm. at the constituency level. Well, the party put in place what we call the Constituency Parliamentary Elections Committee mm -hmm. that was responsible for the sale of forms and the receive of it. So we have said that if you are unable to secure forms at the constituency level, you have mm -hmm. opportunity to write to the regional party mm -hmm. and, and, and or the national party mm -hmm. office of the general secretary and, and copies will be made available to you. So, yes, yeah, some people in, in local politics make news. So mm -hmm. if you've gone to the constituency office and you're unable to secure forms, it becomes news as usual. So yeah. that's what happened in the case of uh, Honorable Adainim. How about he, the he, case he, with he the... got forms mm -hmm. at the regional secretariat. Not at the national secretary. The so how about the, the situation with the Prisia Hunivali? You know, the fact that the gentleman had to, he went through the, uh, the, 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 the constituency level, he didn't get regional, he had to come to the national to actually file a petition. Why does one have to go through that? Well, I mean, as I said, the internal arrangement has been that you, you need to engage the constituency parliamentary relations committee mm -hmm. to start with. Mm -hmm. And then if you are unable to secure one for want of forms uh, are finished and all that, mm -hmm. you proceed to the next level. Mm -hmm. I'm aware that he made contact with the regional party mm -hmm. and he was advised because he submitted a petition. And so sometimes when you're doing this internal mm -hmm. arrangement, mm -hmm. there are some portions of the story you don't lay public. And mm -hmm. so from that level, he came to headquarters he procured forms and filed as such. Mm -hmm. we, we are yet to get to the stage of vetting. Mm -hmm. And so some internal discussions cannot be put out there for public we, we are told that there was a strict directive that said that you can't contest some female MP, certain female MPs. Someone like Eslo So we are told that the uh, Black Ma West constituency, nobody was allowed to pick a form or people were not allowed to contest that seat. Well, I mean, it, it remains a rumor because... Uh, but did I'm anybody aware, pick a form? Yes, I'm, mm. I'm aware two young men pick forms. Mm. And, and these are rules of engagement. Mm -hmm. We didn't state anywhere in these rules of engagement, sanctioned by the National Executive Committee of the party, mm -hmm. that female MPs must not be contested. Mm -hmm. In the wisdom of the National Executive Committee, we open nomination in all the 160 
eight constituencies out of the 169. We didn't do for Ayaosu West Ogon constituency because Honorable Sam uh, al is a by-election MP mm -hmm. and per the party's convention. If you are by-election MP, you are presented again in the, in the next election. So mm -hmm. apart from Ayawasu West Ogon, all the 168 constituencies, we open nomination. So I'm surprised that people will be going around with the, the story that so some female MPs mm -hmm. are uh, being protected from, from uh, the challenge. So uh, we'll come and talk like about that. how many nominations were, were filed and when vetting will begin. Uh, but let me ask you, has it come to your notice that some people, some disgruntled members, are threatening to put an injunction on, on, on the primaries that you're about to hold on 25th April? Has it, it, come to it, your notice? it hasn't, but uh, before you, you want to proceed to court, the mm -hmm. party's constitution is clear that you need to exhaust the internal mechanism to seek your, right. your redress. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll be surprised that at this stage, somebody will want to go to court. I mean, to put injunction on all the 168 constituencies, mm -hmm. I don't think any court, any court of competent jurisdiction will sanction that. Well, so when is vetting? How many people have filed so far? How many nominations do you have? I think so far, mm -hmm. uh, at the last count, uh, we've had about 437. 437? Yes. Okay, when was the last the time you counted? This morning, this before morning. I came here. Okay. Are you still? Is it still open? Because I know you you ended it last. Yes, week. we've ended the we've we've ended the the the, the nomination and and what we are expecting is that constituencies will submit the fill forms to the regional secretariat for the regional executive committee to endorse. Mm -hmm. After which, it will come to national secretariat office of the general secretary for him also to endorse before it's given back. To the National Parliamentary Vetting Committee mm -hmm. for vetting to commence on Friday, 28th, and then it will end on March 8th, 2020. Okay, so you're starting vetting this Friday. This Friday. Okay, and it's ending when? March 8th, 2020. March, March 8th, 2020. Yes. Okay, so what's the what's the process of vetting? How how is it going to look like? Well, we are guided by our constitution, mm -hmm. our rules of engagement. In the 1992 Constitution mm -hmm. of Ghana, the, if you look at Article 94 of the 1992 Constitution, it gives mm -hmm. the criteria uh, necessary to. You need to satisfy those ones before you can be uh, admitted mm -hmm. into Parliament. So, mm -hmm. the vetting committee will 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 query people, will engage prospective aspirants on issues that that will satisfy the party enough that mm -hmm. if you get the nod from the constituency conference, mm -hmm. uh, you are suitable and eligible to sit in parliament as member of parliament. I see. So, so tell us, um, 25th, what should we look forward to? 25th of April. Mm. The, the arrangement is that uh, by 25th of April, uh, the state day is 25th, mm -hmm. uh, the party is in touch with the electoral commission mm -hmm. uh, who will help organize the elections. We are doing both constituency delegate conference mm -hmm. to select or elect our parliamentary candidates. And we are also doing national congress to acclaim our presidential candidates. Right. In view of the huge numbers of our delegate size, we've decentralized the, 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 con the congress. So there will be two things happening on the 25th. The elections or selection of parliamentary candidates in the constituencies, as well as national congress that will claim the presidential candidates. Mm -hmm. For the parliamentary candidates, mm -hmm. delegates to the conference are defined. Mm -hmm. All polling station executives within the constituency, all electoral coordinators in the constituency, all constituency executive committee members, as well as Council of Elders and Patrons 5-5 five five representation each to constitute the constituency delegate conference. Mm -hmm. So they will decide on the fate of all prospective aspirants in the constituency. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to the presidential candidate, it is an acclamation. So that body will have an additional delegate right. to do the acclamation. So mm -hmm. that's what happens. Uh, mm -hmm. External branch members mm -hmm. will bring delegates. Mm -hmm. And so I'm expecting that all the 22 external branch of mm -hmm. the new patriotic party 
will bring their 12 delegates each for the purpose of this acclamation. So that's what's going Evans Nimaku, I wish you all the best. Evans Nimaku is the Director of Elections and Research for the New Patriotic Party. So like you heard, uh, uh, nominations and filing of nominations ended last week. Vetting is starting on Friday 28th uh, February and will end on the 8th of March as they get ready for their uh, parliamentary and uh, uh, presidential elections 